De regreso aquí en Auto 060 y ahora vamos a hablar con la doctora Stuan Akar. Um, we're going to switch back to English actually because we're going to talk to Dr. Satwan uh, Kau Kaur. I'm sorry if I mispronounced mis your last name. She's the first lady of emergence technology and we're going to talk about uh, a very popular topic nowadays, intelligence transportation. How are you, Dr. Kaur? I am doing very well and very happy and proud to be talking to you today. Well, thank you very much. So, uh, intelligent transportation, um, a very, as I said, very popular topic nowadays. Everybody is uh, looking about the uh, autonomous uh, driving cars and actually even a little bit before that, cars that uh, can pretty much drive themselves but also need a little bit of a human intervention. So, um, can, what, what, can you tell us about your predictions? Uh, you're, uh, you're saying that there's going to be great advancements in that uh, pretty shortly, right? Yes, very much so. In fact, I look upon it as a three-dimensional thing that will grow. Uh, the, in this new automotive environment, intelligence will be in two components. The first one would be the vehicles itself, and the second would be the infrastructure. And the third dimension will be the way the vehicles are manufactured. But all three of them put together will define the future. Yeah. On one hand, we will have be able to monitor drivers for signs of being tired or they have used alcohol. We should be able to recognize pedestrians. The cars will see other vehicles and traffic lanes. They can predict and avoid collisions. And the vehicles will be able to navigate themselves and plan routes in real time. The changes in the manufacturing will be in terms of the intelligent robots. On the infrastructure side, we are looking more at highways, traffic management, food signs. All this will work together to promote the safety of the human life. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Kerr, but uh, some of these technologies are already available. I mean, uh, some of the, of the examples that you mentioned, like, for example, detecting uh, pedestrians and animals. I think Volvo already has some systems like that. Uh, Nissan is already experimenting with uh, some cameras that can detect stop signs, traffic lights, speed limits, and actually um, change the behavior of the car as, uh, as needed. So. When are we going to see uh, this like full fledge? I mean, when are you going to really see all these three components of uh, you were mentioning about like become reality? Yes. So the first thing that we talked about is the cars. It is quite one thing to show something as a lab or as a prototype on the road. And it is quite another to be able to build those cars uh, as the minimum configuration on all the cars. So our goal is to reach a point where everybody will be having those cars. The way I look at it, a large part of it is with the manufacturing. Once the public is interested, the car manufacturers will go into having the autonomous robots manufacture them. And these robots will be in the factories and they will need uh, multi-axis motion control circuitry. They will need video-based machine vision. And also they will be getting input from a network of embedded sensors uh, in real time. They will analyze this data. And these are the robots we are talking about. Yeah. And they will take on board machine vision. They will control some axis of rotation with extreme precision. They will process data streams generated by a network of connected centers. They will also use a video analytic software to recognize the changes in the environment and respond to them in an appropriate way. And all this with the low power consumption will enable smart robots and they will be a key to seeing these cars on the road and all of us driving it, not just in a car show. Yeah, but uh, again, when, when do you see this all coming together? Like. Uh some manufacturer had talking about 2020. Uh, that that doesn't seem that far away, right? I don't think we will have to wait till 2020 at all. You wow! Know, I will. I believe by by next year, the end of 2015, we will have see many of those technologies already um, on the road. In fact, but what the, the bigger thing that we have to make this to work is yes, 2015 we will see those technologies on the road. The bigger aspect is how do we prepare the transportation system to have those roads? Yeah. For example, the, we should have our roads, and that is another transition we have to make. Otherwise, this is we only have one side of the coin. For example, we have to have roads that are 
smart enough to do a vehicle inspection by themselves. For example, a roadway device should have used a triangulation method, laser triangulation method, to measure the wear of tread on a car. A digital high-speed camera should be embedded in the road. It should look up and capture the tire surface and it should record 3D profile of it. The smart 3D camera will provide this information with Ethernet cable or wireless LAN to activate the warning system, whether to activate the barriers. So this kind of vehicle inspection by smart roads is what will help us move to that next layer, which the, even though the car technologies will make it happen by 2015, it this is more work that needs to be done. Then there are other areas of infrastructure that are there. We can talk about them. Yeah. So uh, basically, I mean, uh, people like you with all your expertise and knowledge and uh, like the manufacturers that uh, put that, that into a practical use in a car, are way more advanced than governments and like cities and like uh, building, as you say, the infrastructure to adapt to this technology. It seems to me, right? Yes, absolutely. You said that very well, Lydia. Yeah. So, and also, uh, what are you going to tell to people who, I mean, a lot of people really enjoy driving and like, uh, have to have want to have control of the vehicle when they are driving but to another good number of people the, the 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 commute like going from home to the office to the school to whatever and back it's just like something that they have to do so I mean first what would you say to people who like really enjoy driving and are, are, we, are we gonna take that away from them <laughs> Oh, yeah? You know, yes. In fact, every year at the Christmas time, when there is vacation in most offices, I do a cross-country drive off the car wow. to enjoy just, yeah, and that is my that was my vacation on the road. So, yes, that part of enjoyment will go away. However, if you look at it differently, and I have myself been looking at it a little differently, what is it that we enjoy? Because the scenery evokes our creativity. I have been able to invent this year alone uh, four different um, uh, intelligent devices that are in the Internet of Things and that improve human life. All four of them, believe it or not, those ideas, those creativity came while I was on the road looking at different sceneries. So the car can drive itself. I can still enjoy the creativity process that comes with change of scenery. Yeah. That is the way I have been looking at it. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a little bit. But I, I'm saying, like, for example, some people really like manual transmissions and really have control of everything, like the 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 yeah. throttle, the braking, the handling and all that. So that's going to exist still, right? Of course, absolutely. And as long as there are people who love old technologies, technologies they will be on the road. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we will keep them alive. Yeah. So we're talking to Dr. Sawan uh, Kaur, uh, the, the first lady of intelligent technology. Um, on emerging technologies, I'm sorry. And uh, one other thing, there's also a lot of concern about privacy because like with all this technology in the cars, they're pretty much, I mean, we're being watched somehow, quote unquote, uh, every moment, where are we going, how fast we're going, uh, all of those kind of things. So how would you address those kind of concerns? Yes, so the, uh, that is a double-edged sword. We will enjoy the greater freedom that comes with having to uh, automate the functions in our life. But at the same time, the regulation aspect of it will increase. For example, when we are having traffic control by smart highway, the roadside unit will collect the traffic flow and road condition data, and they will share it with other systems, and that can uh, avoid collision. So this, uh, this will come, the automation will come in along with our ability to be disciplined on the road. So I am all having more regulations. And so if, if today I don't service my car, nobody knows about it. Yeah. Only three years later, DMV sent me a smog check certificate. And I look at it and say, hey, what is this smog check that I have to do? So there is more um, regulation. But I think that is a necessary aspect of being safe and enjoying our brains and our bodies for what they are meant to 
do and not just battle in traffic all day. Yeah, a fascinating topic, Dr. Kaura. Unfortunately, I mean, we only have like one more minute. So can we, can you share with uh, our audience where can they look for more information about you and the projects that you work on? Oh, yes, absolutely. And I would enjoy it if they came and looked. My website is the same as my name, satwantkaur.com, S-A-T-W-A-N-T-K-A-U-R.com. In fact, if you put my name in the Google, my first website is the first thing that comes up. And satwantkaur.com will tell you everything that I am doing. It will also tell you that I work for Hewlett Packard as a chief technologist of innovation for HLS and all other things that I do and have done in the industry. And I am so happy, Javier, you gave me this opportunity to come here and share this on the Sirius Radio Network today. No, thank you very much for your time and for sharing your knowledge. And again, a fascinating topic. I think we could talk uh, the whole hour about these things, but unfortunately radio is like that. And uh, you said you, you work for Hewlett Packard, and it's pretty impressive how, uh, I mean, people don't know how much technology goes into the car and all sort of companies go into it, right? Yes, so, and of course, I would say that Hewlett Packard is the best technology company in the whole wide world. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time again, and we're going to post all your information on your webpage and all that on our Facebook page and website so people can share it. So thank you very much again, and I will talk to you soon. Bye now. Bye. Thank you. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.